close your eyes and make yourself comfortable. Take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly let the breath out through your mouth. Again, take another deep breath in through your nose and slowly and gently let the breath out. Once again, deep breath in and slowly breathe out. Now imagine yourself standing on a beautiful beach, glorious white sand, and you can hear the calming sounds of the ocean. You can hear the waves as they gently come into the shore. As you listen to the waves, breathe in deeply and slowly breathe out. Breathing in cool, refreshing air. And every time you hear the waves breaking on the shore, you become more and more relaxed, more and more calm, and more and more peaceful. And you look out over the ocean and see the amazing blue water so calm and peaceful as the waves gently come up onto the sand and then slowly slide back down again back into the beautiful blue ocean and the day is warm and fresh and the sun is shining high up in the sky with only a few fluffy white clouds drifting on by Now further up on the beach is a cave and you get interested so you go and take a look at it. The cave is warm and the air is moist and it's actually very light inside it so you can see where you're going. You walk through to the other end of the cave and you see that it comes out into a lovely tropical forest you can hear the sounds of the forest birds singing. You can even feel a gentle breeze on your face and it feels ever so nice. You can hear the sounds of small animals scurrying through the undergrowth as they go about their daily business. As you walk further in, you see a large rock pool in this enchanting and amazing forest. And it has a very large tree standing next to it. And some of its branches are hanging low over the water. And it's then that you notice it's actually a banana tree. And you can see lots of bananas hanging down. And they look very tasty too. And you are a bit hungry now. So you decide to pull a few bananas off the tree for your lunch. When suddenly a small fish leaps out of the water and pulls a banana off the tree and then disappears back into the water. Wow, a banana eating fish. You didn't think fish ate bananas. Well, apparently this one does. You pull off a couple for yourself and sit down to enjoy the tasty bananas. And as you sit there, the little fish again leaps out of the water grabs a banana and goes back under the water again. Oh my, you wonder what kind of fish it is. Clearly it likes bananas. How strange. As you sit there eating your bananas, a little head pops up out of the water and stares at you. It's the little fish again. He smiles at you and says hello. A talking fish that eats bananas. What next? You think to yourself. The little fish 
tells you his name is Pete. And he tells you that he is a piranha. Oh no, you think to yourself, a piranha? You're very sure that they eat people. The little fish sees your look of alarm and tells you that he doesn't eat people. Nobody he knows eats people. Besides, he says, they don't taste very nice. He only eats bananas. They are his favourite food. Well, the only food they will eat, really. He tells you that his family and friends only eat fish. And they think he's very strange because he eats bananas. So strange, in fact, that they don't talk to him anymore. And this makes him very sad indeed. Pete asks you if you would like to come for a swim with him. And you say, yes, of course. Um, as long as you don't eat me. And you both give a little laugh. So with a big leap, you jump into the rock pool with an enormous splash. And you swim around for a little while. And then Pete asks you if you would like to meet his friends who live deep within the ocean. Well, you say yes, but you don't think you can hold your breath that long. But Pete says not to worry. He has a magic sweet you can eat and it will let you breathe underwater. So you pop the sweet in your mouth and dive deep under the water. Wow, you can still breathe. It's just like breathing air, only it's all watery. Oh, and you can also talk too. Pete takes you to the deep ocean floor and to a little cave. Here is where his friends live. And just then, a big squiggly tentacle slowly slides out of the cave, followed by a rather big octopus who is then followed by many, many smaller octopus. You try to count them, but there are just too many of them. Pete gives a little laugh and tells you that his friend Olivia, the big octopus, has 200 children. Wow, that's a lot of children. Olivia smiles and she says she would like to show you around the cave where they all live. And then she suggests she take you on a tour of the ocean floor. How fantastic is that? So just for a little while, go with Olivia and Pete and all the little octopus and see where they live. See how they live. Then you can have a wonderful tour of the ocean floor. Go and see what else lives at the bottom of the ocean. See how many different creatures you can find and have fun.
now you all return to the cave. How wonderful that was to see all the other creatures that live in the ocean. What kind of creatures did you see? Where did they live? How many did you see? Pete, the banana eating piranha, tells Olivia the octopus about the bananas he eats. And he tells her how tasty they are. And he teaches them how good bananas are for them. Very good for the bones, Pete says. So Olivia decides that the next time she surfaces above the water, she will give these tasty bananas a try. Pete is ecstatic because he knows that they will love them just as much as he does. But now it's time for you to return home. So you say goodbye to Olivia and her children and Pete guides you back to the rock pool. You climb out of the water and turn and say goodbye to Pete and you really hope you can see him again soon. Pete tells you that you can come and visit him and his friends anytime you want. So you wave goodbye to Pete and begin your journey back home. As you walk, breathe in deeply, filling your lungs with the wonderful, fresh, clean air. And your mind gently begins to drift into a lovely, comfortable silence, just letting all the thoughts pass on by and watching any of those thoughts just drift away. Breathe deeply as you allow the sounds of the magnificent ocean to wash over you. Can you hear the gentle sounds of the waves? They're still there. Breathe in deeply and slowly and gently breathe out. And you are very sleepy now. So tired. So sleepy. You've had a long day. And then you realise that you are back in your very own bed now. And you wonder how that happened. It's a kind of magic. You snuggle down and get very comfy. You feel yourself going deeper and deeper into beautiful, blissful sleep. Feeling so peaceful, so calm, so relaxed. And you can still hear the waves. With each passing wave, your body becomes lighter and lighter. And you have become like the waves, one with the ocean. So just listen to the sounds of the beautiful deep blue ocean and just rest. Just sleep. Now imagine a beautiful special rainbow floating just above your head and you can see the purples and the blues. You can see the greens and the yellows, the oranges and the reds. And maybe you can even see some gold and silver too. See how it shines so brightly. See the beautiful colors and it's like the colors are alive. That's because they are. Can you see them? Each time you breathe out, this beautiful rainbow grows larger and larger. And it starts to gently wash over you, helping you to relax. And you can actually feel the colours washing over your body. 
Can you feel it? Can you feel how warm it is? How it makes your skin tingle just a little bit? Everywhere the colours touch you, you feel yourself relaxing deeper and deeper. And you feel so peaceful, so calm and so very relaxed. As you breathe in, this beautiful rainbow light makes you feel so safe and protected and you feel so loved. That's because you are safe, you are loved and you are protected always. In front of you is a flower bed filled with daffodils all different shades of yellow and all shimmering in the sunlight. And you watch as they raise their heads up to the sunlight, drawing all that they need, all of it from the sun, the warmth to grow and to stretch themselves, the light to raise themselves higher still. And they are surrounded by the light, just as you are. The yellow light rays of the sun lift you up too and you can feel your spirits rising. You can feel the inspiring rays of the sun shining down on your body and you can feel the joy beginning to enter your heart and you feel ever so happy. You see many other different types of flowers all swaying gently in the cool, calm breeze, all lifting their heads towards the sunlight, just like you. And you realize you can hear running water. So you stand up to see where it's coming from. And you walk along the gravel pathway towards the sound. And as you draw closer to it, you see before you a wonderful shallow stream and the water is so clear and so inviting you can even see tiny colourful fish as they swim on by and there are rocks in this stream of yours and the sound you heard is the water flowing around and over them the sun is shining on the water and it looks like a thousand stars are bouncing all over it and it's so beautiful and you decide to sit down on the bank by the stream for just a while just to relax and just drift with your thoughts and you gaze into the water feeling so peaceful so calm so relaxed it's lovely As you sit there, each thought that you have, just let it go. Place it into the water and watch it as it washes away. And you watch as the thought just gently sails off into the distance, bouncing along the ripples of the water until it's out of sight. It's quite funny to watch, really. When you have another thought, just do the same thing again and watch it as it sails off into the distance. And while you've been sitting here, just thinking your little thoughts, you suddenly notice sitting beside you is a little brown duck. He has his eyes closed and you notice his lovely shiny brown feathers. You can even see some water drops on his folded wings and you wonder what he's doing he opens his little brown eyes and looks at you and he tells you that his name is Marvin and that he comes here every day at this same time just to meditate by the stream he says he likes to think of all the things he is grateful for in his life 
and he likes to say thank you out loud because it makes him feel really, really good. He asks you if you'd like to join him and be grateful with him. Well, you say, yes, but you're not really sure what you have to do. So Marvin explains. Marvin tells you that all you have to do is think of all the things you are grateful for. Things like your parents, your friends, your pets, the ice cream that you ate last week, your lovely soft bed, your new school bag to carry your books, anything at all that you love and you are grateful for. You get the idea. So you sit with Marvin and close your eyes. And in your mind, spend a few moments thinking of all the things you are grateful for. All of the good things in your life. All of the things that make you happy. So just sit there with Marvin for just a moment. Marvin opens his eyes, and you do too. Marvin says, now it's time to say thank you for all the good things in your life. So the two of you say as loud as you can, thank you, thank you, thank you. Doesn't that feel good? Especially when you say it really loudly. How do you feel right now? Can you feel big smile on your face can you feel your heart all filled up with love and gratitude Marvin smiles at you and tells you that you did very well for your first time he's an expert you see he does it all the time but it's now time for Marvin to go so he says his goodbyes and waddles off into the stream You ask him where he's going. He says he's going home now. But first, he wants to have a little swim. So he says goodbye again and swims off into the distance, quacking away happily as he goes. You think he's very mysterious, this Marvin. Very, very nice, but very mysterious. You don't know anything about him at all. But you do like him. What a lovely little mystic duck he is. You won't ever forget Marvin, will you? You now put your feet into the water and feel the cool, refreshing flow of it running gently over them. And it feels so wonderful, so refreshing and revitalising. And you look around you. You feel so free here, so relaxed. And it feels so wonderful 
just to sit with your feet in the cool, calm water, listening to the sounds of nature. Just you, the water and nature. And you feel so very grateful just to be here. So sit for just a moment and just listen. Listen to the sounds of the crystal clear, calming water as it soothes your very soul. Listen to the sounds of the crystal clear, calming water as it makes your soul sing with happiness. Now you realise that you are back in your very own bed, feeling all warm and snuggly. And it's time for you to sleep now, as your eyes are becoming very heavy and your body is beginning to go all soft with sleepiness. So you settle down and pull the quilt or blanket up over your shoulders and take a big deep breath in through your nose and then slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth and you feel so happy you met Marvin today so blessed so grateful as you take another deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out One last time, deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out. And just as the wave of sleepiness is coming all over your body, you see once again Marvin's happy little face. Lovely Marvin. Marvin the Mystic Duck. And you give a great big soft sigh as you smile and drift gently into the best night's sleep ever. Now imagine that you're standing in a beautiful lush green field and it's raining very lightly. You look down at your feet and you notice you don't have any shoes on. You wriggle your toes in the soft, cool and damp grass and it feels so good. It feels so good to connect to Mother Earth herself and your feet start to tingle just a little bit. You can smell the beautiful aroma of the wet grass and it smells so pure. And tiny raindrops glisten on the lush green leaves. Close your eyes and feel the warm sun on your face. The rain has stopped now and there is a gentle breeze blowing and you stretch your arms out either side of you and feel the breeze sweep over your entire body. You feel great, so much better, more calm and peaceful. You look down and you see a path really see all the details of the path. What's it made from? Is it narrow or is it wide? Is the path winding or is it straight? You decide it's your path. You begin to walk and see the path is leading you into a beautiful and majestic forest and you can enter that forest. What can you see? What can you hear? You look over towards the trees and decide to take a look because it kind of looks like a mini forest. And as you get nearer, you see some very big, beautiful weeping willow trees and their branches are so long, they're almost touching the ground. The leaves glisten in the sunlight 
and they shimmer and shine with a beautiful silvery green colour. You walk amongst them, touching their leaves with your fingers, and they feel smooth and silky to the touch. And as you look up, you can see the sun is shining through the branches, almost making it look as if the tree itself is moving and swaying in the cool breeze. As you walk deeper into the forest, it feels very magical, and you notice that all of your senses seem to sharpen as you walk deeper and deeper into it. It feels so lovely and peaceful here. Up ahead, you notice that the forest starts to thin as it opens into a clearing. And as you approach the clearing, you notice it's lighter and brighter than the forest and it has a calm and peaceful energy. It's then that you see a very large tree and you are magnetically drawn towards the tree. As you get closer, you just know and feel that this tree is a very ancient and very wise old tree. It has very large roots all around it and they're growing deep, deep down into the earth and the trunk is wide and majestic looking. As you stand there, looking at this ancient and wise old tree, you become aware of a chattering sound and you wonder what it is. You look up, you see something move very quickly, then you see another movement and another one and you wonder what on earth could it be? Then suddenly, everything goes quiet. You keep looking though, and it's then that you see a little head pop out from between the leaves. It's a squirrel, a beautiful red squirrel with little tufty ears. He grins at you and says hello. He tells you his name is Joseph. Then other little heads pop out too, more little red squirrels. And they're all smiling at you and looking at you with great big beautiful brown eyes. You say hello to them and you ask them what they're doing here. Joseph tells you that this is their home. It's where they live. They ask you if you would like to join them and see exactly where they live. Well, of course you would love to, but you're a lot bigger than they are and you wonder if you can fit in the tree with them. You don't think you can. Joseph says he can do magic and asks you if you would like to be a squirrel for the day. Then that way you can definitely fit in the tree. You think this is a wonderful idea. So Joseph pulls out a little silk bag. He reaches inside with his tiny paw and pulls out very sparkly magic dust. It shimmers and it shines very brightly. He then throws it down on top of your head. Well, at first, nothing seems to be happening. But then, you find yourself getting smaller and smaller. You find that you are shrinking. And at the same time, you feel like you are growing a tail. A very big, fluffy tail. Your hands and your feet have turned into little paws and your whole body has fur growing on your skin. You even have a little twitchy squirrel nose too and tufty ears, just like Joseph. Do you think this is fantastic? How exciting. You have become a squirrel. Joseph says not to worry though. You won't stay like that. It's just for today. Or if you want to, you can have a sleepover with them. And it could be for tomorrow too. You can have your very own house in their tree. And you can be a squirrel with them overnight as well. And you say, oh yes, please. You suddenly realise that you can do exactly what the squirrels can do. So you scamper up the trunk of the tree and you are moving very fast indeed. Then, almost immediately, you're standing right next to Joseph and his friends. Joseph asks you if you would like to explore their home now, 
Well, obviously you say yes. They all turn and leap forward onto another branch and it kind of looks like they are flying. You're not really sure if you can do this, but Joseph shouts to you. Just believe you can do it and you will. So you leap forward and realise that you are doing it too and it does feel like flying. You all jump from branch to branch at lightning speed and it feels wonderful. You believed you could do it and you did. Joseph leads the way to his home. He has a lovely little white house tucked away amongst the branches and the leaves. His friends' houses are dotted all over the tree, some high, some low, and they look really lovely. Little lights are shining inside them, and they look ever so cosy. On the outside, there are hundreds of tiny fireflies all shining their lights for you. There is a rainbow of colour everywhere, and each tiny firefly is a different one, each having its own unique colour. So many different variations of colours, and you look at them in complete awe. It looks amazing. Then Joseph leads you to another little house. He tells you that this is your house. Oh, wow, you have your own, very, very, very own house. That's fantastic. Joseph opens the door for you and inside the warm light from the little lamps are making your house look ever so cosy and friendly. Joseph tells you that you can decorate your house any way you would like and they will help you. So, go ahead and design the inside of your house now. Make it look just how you would want it to be. Anything that makes you feel happy when you think about it, you can have. Inside your house, think about all the things that make you feel good. All the things that make you smile. Maybe you would like your favourite toy here. Maybe you would like great big soft and plump cushions everywhere. Or a sofa and chairs. Or maybe you would just like it as a bedroom. You decide. See it all in your mind's eye. Can you see it? So just for a little while, create your house with the help of Joseph and his friends.
Oh, what a beautiful home you have created. This is a place to let go of all your thoughts, all of your worries. This is a place to let go of anything that may make you feel sad. It's very safe here and you will only ever feel happy whilst you are here. You have created your very own stash of nuts to nibble on. You didn't notice before, but there they are by the fireplace. Oh, goody. You're feeling a bit sleepy now, though, and would really like to go to bed. So you thank Joseph and his friends for helping you create the most perfect home. Joseph tells you that they too are feeling sleepy, and he tells you they can all play again tomorrow. So you all say goodnight to each other. You close your front door and head off to your bedroom, the one you created just for you. Now that you have the most perfect bedroom, you climb up on the most perfect bed and you lay your head on the soft and fluffy pillows and give a big sigh of happiness. You look over to a large window with beautiful curtains hanging either side of it and through this window you can see the night sky and the beautiful stars shining just like diamonds twinkling away. You stare at them for a few minutes and think how lucky you are to have met Joseph and his friends. They are so kind. You really are looking forward to playing with them tomorrow. But your eyes are feeling really heavy now. And your body is feeling ever so tired. So you take a deep breath in through your nose. And gently blow it out from your mouth. Take another deep breath. And gently blow it out from your mouth. You feel very sleepy now. So tired, so relaxed and peaceful. And you feel a gentle wave of sleepiness starting at your feet. And it's a warm and gentle feeling. Kind of like how a feather feels when you brush it against your skin. So soft and gentle, but a little bit tickly. And you can feel your toes going to sleep. And it feels all warm and tingly ever so soft. You feel a soothing, gentle wave of sleepiness coming up your calves and your shins. And you feel it going up your thighs. You think your legs have already gone to sleep. You feel so tired, so sleepy, so very happy. The beautiful wave of sleepiness travels all the way up your body, down your arms and into your hands, making your body feel very, very heavy, very, very tired, very, very sleepy. And this gentle, warm wave of sleepiness travels up your face and over the top of your head and down the back of your neck. So tired now, so sleepy. You feel nice and warm and snuggly under your soft quilt and very fluffy pillow. So just have a little sleep now, night night. Now imagine that you are in the most beautiful and amazing garden and you can feel the soft grass beneath your feet. You can hear the fluttering of birds. You can hear the wings as they fly around you looking for insects to eat. You can even hear them singing in the trees. And your beautiful garden is surrounded by bright green bushes and they become brighter and sharper as you look around. 
and there are beautiful statues dotted all over the place. And the plants that you see are so vibrant and the flowers smell wonderful and it tickles your nose just a little bit. Breathe in the fresh, crisp air. It feels so good to be here. Now this garden is very, very big and you notice some movement further into the garden you wonder what it is. It's then you see ladies in long flowing dresses and men carrying swords on their hips and you wonder who they are. Can you see them? They're all laughing and having fun. In fact, they all seem to be having a jolly good time. It's like they're having their own garden party. You can hear medieval music in the background. And it has a very friendly atmosphere. And you feel so peaceful and calm. It's so relaxing here. As you look around you, you see horses too. And you wonder how on earth they got here. You can even smell the horses. A bit whiffy, some of them. As you continue to walk forward, you notice a path before you. And its stones are smooth and they glisten in the sunlight. So you step onto this path and continue to walk forward. And you wonder, where does it go? Where will it lead you? With each step you take, you can feel yourself becoming more and more relaxed. And you feel so peaceful following this gently winding path. And the music you are hearing is slowly fading as you walk further away from it. You notice two butterflies floating past you. It's like they are dancing on the gentle breeze just for you. You watch them as they land and settle on a beautiful bright yellow flower. And they just sit there with their wings gently opening and closing. Cooling off a thing. In the distance, you hear the trickling sounds of water. So you move towards the sound to see where it's coming from. And you find yourself standing before a great stone fountain. What does your fountain look like? Is it made of stone or is it made of marble? Notice the details. Are there any curves on your fountain? Or is it all straight lines? You can see and hear the splashing of the water as it runs down the fountain. And you know that the water in this fountain is here to refresh you. And it feels very special to be here. It feels like a very special place. You see a cup on the edge of the fountain and you pick it up. It's not really a cup, it's a chalice. But you feel very thirsty now. So you eagerly dip your chalice into the water. You bring it up to your lips and you sip the water, drinking every last drop. You feel overwhelmingly grateful for this water because it makes you feel so alive and so refreshed. And you're so thankful for this healing and rejuvenation. It makes you feel as if everything has been healed in your body. And it makes you feel that your mind is now very clear and that nothing can ever bother you again. This fountain inspires you to appreciate the gifts in your life. It makes you so very grateful for all of the people that love you and who are a part of your life, your family, your friends, well for everyone really. Suddenly you hear a rustling in the bushes nearby and you wonder what it is. So you walk over and take a look. As you part the bushes, you see a tiny little white rabbit. He is very small and has very long droopy ears and the saddest brown eyes you have ever seen. You slowly and gently reach out your hand to him to show him that he has nothing to be afraid of. He looks back at you and gives your hand a little sniff. And as he does this, something very special happens. You can hear his thoughts in your mind. Well, rabbits can't talk, so it's only natural that he can speak to you with his mind, isn't it? 
and you hear him saying in your mind, Please help me, I am so thirsty, but because I am so small, I cannot reach the fountain to have a drink. Please will you help me? Well, of course you will, you say. You take the chalice and fill it with water, and then gently place it on the ground in front of the tiny rabbit. And you watch as he drinks and drinks and drinks. Wow, you think to yourself, he really is thirsty. When the little white rabbit has finished all of the water in the cup, he says thank you, but he still looks so sad. So you ask him, why is he still so sad? And in your mind, you hear him reply that he doesn't know what to do when you are gone because he still can't reach the fountain and he still won't be able to drink the water. So you look around you to find something you can build some steps with. If you do that, then the little rabbit will never have to worry again. So you find some very large stones and you gather them all up and begin to make steps for the little white rabbit. The little white rabbit sits and watches you. Eventually, you make enough steps and ask the little white rabbit to try and climb up them. He's a little bit afraid at first, but with you cheering him on, he bravely climbs up all of the steps. He reaches the top and he looks at you with amazement and such happiness on his little face. He stands on the rim of the fountain and begins to drink the water. When he's finished, he looks at you with the biggest grin and his big brown eyes are shining with happiness. He can't thank you enough. He tells you now that he will never have to worry about how he can get to the water. He tells you that he's going to tell all of his friends so that they too can drink. The little white rabbit suddenly gives a little laugh and he says because he was so thirsty he forgot to tell you his name. So he tells you his name is Sebastian. So you tell him your name. You even shake hands. Well, hand in a paw. So for a few moments, spend some time talking to Sebastian and get to know him a little bit. Maybe he will introduce you to his friends. Look around you some more. Maybe you and Sebastian can visit the ladies in the long dresses and the gentlemen who carry swords on their hips. Maybe the two of you can join in their garden party. So have a look, have fun, see what else is out there.
it's time for you to leave the garden and say goodbye to Sebastian. He thanks you once more for all of your kindness to him. He tells you that he hopes that you will soon come back to visit him. And he says that next time he'll take you to the underground village. Maybe you can even have a sleepover there. You wave goodbye and begin to walk back along the path. The trees above you are very strong. Their leaves are glistening in the sunlight. Without the water from this fountain, it would not stand so tall and so strong. The flowers, maybe they would not smile as much. The animals would go thirsty. But they are happy because of you. They are happy because you are so grateful for everything in your life. It's like a ripple effect. When you are happy, it shows. It can be seen in your eyes and in your smile. And the world can feel your happiness. So the world will smile too. Because the world will feel happy, just like you. And you feel ever so happy now, full of joy and peace. And always remember that you can return to this garden whenever you would like. And you can fill your cup with gratitude and of course, to see Sebastian again. But you feel very sleepy now. So tired and relaxed. And you feel a gentle wave of sleepiness starting at your feet. You can feel your toes going to sleep. And it feels all warm and tingly and ever so soft. You can feel this soothing, gentle wave of sleepiness coming up your calves and your shins. You can feel it going up into your thighs and you think your legs have already gone to sleep. You feel very tired now, so sleepy, so happy. And it feels hard to open your eyes because they feel so heavy. And this beautiful wave of sleepiness travels all the way up your body down your arms and into your hands, making your body feel very, very heavy, very, very tired, and very, very sleepy. And this gentle, warm wave of sleepiness travels up your face, over the top of your head and down the back of your neck. Oh, you feel so tired now. So sleepy. But you feel nice and warm and snuggly. So just have a little sleep now. Ooh, night night. Sleep tight. Now imagine that you are in a beautiful, lush green meadow. And there are flowers growing all around the edges of this lovely field. And parts of this field have very long grass and it's blowing in the gentle breeze. And here you are safe, you are loved and you are protected always. So take a look around you. What else can you see? Take a good look around. You can hear rustling up ahead of you in the long grass and you wonder what it is. And as you look ahead, you see that the long grass is moving. What on earth could it be? So you set out to take a look. You walk towards the moving grass. And what do you see? Lo and behold, you find a little black pug puppy. And it's on its own in the field. It is playing all by itself and it seems to be having a really good time rolling around in the grass. So you watch it for a moment, just having fun. 
You watch it as it chases its tail, trying ever so hard to catch it. But it can't. It's a beautiful, chubby little puppy. And it has one white patch over its eye. And you wonder if that's its name. Patch. You would call it Patch if it was your puppy. You like the name Patch. The puppy suddenly stops because it's seen you standing there. And you don't want to frighten it. So very gently, you reach out your hand for the little puppy to have a little sniff so it's not afraid. The little puppy has a good sniff of your hand. And then, when it seems satisfied that you won't hurt it, it starts to jump up and down with excitement and starts licking you. So you gently stroke its beautiful fur. It feels so soft under your hand. So you sit down and you play with the puppy. You have to sit down because you are very big to the puppy. You and the little puppy begin rolling around in the grass having a really good time. And you worry a little bit about the puppy because, well, it's in this big field all by itself and you think, well, what if it's lost? Or you do hope not. But it isn't lost because just then, appearing out of the long grass is a much bigger pug dog. It's the puppy's mother and she's been looking for her fair baby all over the place she rushes up to the puppy and snuggles it and the little puppy is so happy it starts jumping all over its mother the puppy's mother looks at you with such kind and loving eyes then to your surprise she speaks to you you are absolutely flabbergasted this beautiful pug dog can speak oh my You notice that the puppy's mother has the same patch over her eye as the puppy does. It looks very cute. She tells you that her name is Violet and that her puppy's name is Simon. Well, you were wrong about the name Patch and you laugh a little bit to yourself. And now you know that the little puppy is a boy. Violet is so thankful to you for looking after her puppy that she invites you to a special place which other humans don't know about. It's called Puppy Palace. She tells you to follow her, so you happily do. You walk through the long grass, feeling it brush against your legs. Simon, the little puppy, is so happy rushing up ahead of you. He almost looks as if he's smiling. After a short while, you come to a little white wooden fence with a gate in the middle of it. Violet opens the gate and you all trot through it. What you see on the other side is absolutely amazing. There is what looks like a very large castle with many, many turrets. And the whole place is painted white with big black spots all over it. There is a pathway to the palace that you all follow. And it takes you up to the most amazingly large doors that you have ever seen. They are enormous. And they too are white with black spots. And they kind of look like a spotty dog. The big doors open up for you as if by magic. And when you step through the other side, you see what looks like a gigantic house of fun. And you can see a majestic scene of bright colours absolutely everywhere. It is so wonderful. There are dogs of all different sizes and breeds. Big ones, small ones, thin ones, chubby ones. German Shepherds, Poodles, Yorkshire Terriers, Pugs and many, many more. 
Violet tells you that the palace is run solely by puppies and dogs. They even have a king. Their king is a big German shepherd called Hans and he has a very deep voice. There is also a queen. Now the queen is a poodle and she is called Penelope. King Hans and Queen Penelope, that sounds very regal, don't you think? This palace is a place of pure fun and here you will be treated like royalty. Ooh, lovely. Violet tells you that you can take a good look around if you want to. And you do want to, oh so very much. Everything here is free. Even snacks and food if you want it. Mmm, you are feeling a bit peckish. You can see some small dogs sliding down the biggest water slide you have ever seen. They have brightly coloured bobble hats on with streamers flying down the back of them. You see an Olympic sized swimming pool with yet more dogs swimming and doing aqua aerobics of all things. Others are jumping off the diving board and making massive splashes in the water. There is a ball pool with little dogs disappearing beneath the colourful balls and they are having such great fun. But you decide to enter the palace itself to see what's inside it. Oh, wow. You did not expect all of the wonderful things that are inside. The first thing you see is a racetrack and it runs right through the palace and ends up outside, back in the gardens. There is a games room with everything in it that you could wish for. The other puppies are having a really jolly time in here. There are trapeze dogs flying high above you doing the most amazing acrobatics. Ooh, it looks a bit scary up there. There is so much to do here that your head is spinning with all of it. Violet and Simon, who are still with you, tell you that it's your turn now. You can go around the palace and do whatever ever you like. Maybe you can play in the ball pool. Have fun on the water slides. Become an acrobat if you want to. Whatever you want to do, you can do. And don't forget the snacks and food if you need it. So for a little while, you decide to do just that. So go, explore and have lots and lots of fun.
So, did you have fun playing with the puppies? Did you see and do all the things that you wanted to? Did you get yourself a snack? You're feeling a bit sleepy now and you wonder, is this somewhere that you could take a little rest? You notice that Simon looks very sleepy too and he's having a hard time keeping his eyes open and he stifles a great big yawn. Violet, who sees that the two of you are very tired now, leads you both into another very large room. And this room has the biggest dog bed there ever has been. It is the size of a small house. Oh my, it is massive. And it's made of the softest fur and has the biggest, squishiest cushions made of feathers and it's for you to lie down on. Violet tells the two of you it's time for a little nap. So you both jump onto the big, soft dog bed and get comfortable. There are lots of other dogs there too. And you close your eyes. You take a big, deep breath and you just sigh it out because you're so happy. So happy to be with Simon and his mum. So happy to have met all of the other lovely puppies. And your eyes are very heavy now. And you really don't want to open them, but that's okay. Because you don't feel like it anyway. So maybe just lie here for a little nap. After all, a little snooze never hurt anyone. And as you lie here, be safe in the knowledge that you can always come back to Puppy Palace to see your new friends whenever you like. So snuggle up next to Simon. And when you wake up, you will be in your very own bed, feeling refreshed and happy and ready to start the new day. Now imagine in your mind that you are in a very large, very large field. And you take a look around and you see some trees way off in the distance. The sun is shining brightly with just a few little clouds floating past. Then you look down and you notice that you are standing on concrete. Concrete? in the middle of this very large field. Hmm, it's like an enormous pathway. And then you realize that it's actually a runway, a runway with a rather fancy plane at the end of it. And as you look towards the plane, two animals approach you. One is a big pink pig. The other is a black and white, very large, fluffy panda and they are hurrying towards you with great big smiles on their faces they call out your name and you wonder how do they know your name the big pink pig and the black and white fluffy panda introduce themselves to you the big pink pig tells you that her name is Penelope she tells you that the very large black and white fluffy panda's name is Alexander. Penelope the pig and Alexander the panda are the very best of friends and they go on many fun adventures together. They tell you that they have a surprise for you. They tell you that they asked your parents if it would be okay for you to go on an adventure with them. Well, of course your parents said yes. Penelope tells you that their other friend, Rupert the Rat, well, he was supposed to go with them today, but he was on his holiday, so he couldn't go. So they changed the name on the ticket just for you. It has your name clearly printed on it in big, bright letters. 
Can you see it? Can you see your name on the ticket? It's a very special ticket. It's a golden ticket. And this ticket allows you to have access to a place called Animal Adventures. It's kind of like a holiday park, but it's for all kinds of animals, not humans. Hmm, you wonder where on earth that special place could be. The three of you climb aboard the fancy plane and take your seats. You fasten your seatbelts and you sit back and relax. It's then that you ask Alexander, um, who is flying the plane? Oh, that's Ozzy. Ozzy the octopus. He says. You wonder how on earth an octopus can fly a plane. But Alexander said it's okay because Ozzy has so many tentacles that he can use all of the controls all by himself. The plane begins to taxi along the runway, building up speed as it goes. It rumbles and it rocks, and then suddenly it's off the ground and climbing up towards the sky. And you look out of the window and see the ground getting further away as a special fancy plane climbs higher and higher. As you continue to look out of the window, you realise that you are now flying over a great big blue ocean. And the sun is shining down on the water, making wonderful sparkles of light dance all over it. It really does look amazing. You can see a pod of whales as they elegantly rise up out of the waves. And then, well, not so elegantly crash back down again. You can see dolphins too. Can you see them all? All of these beautiful creatures. Your plane now begins to descend back down again. And you can see a new runway below you. You watch out of the window as the plane gently eases itself down, down, down onto the ground. The plane rumbles and rocks once again and then comes to a halt. And you think Ozzy the Octopus did a very good job flying the plane, splendid in fact. The three of you climb down the steps of the plane and begin to walk towards massive wooden gates and they are really huge. There is a little meerkat sitting at a small wooden table. Tickets, please, he says in a very happy voice. Penelope hands over your tickets and the big gates begin to open slowly, making a very loud creaking noise as they do. Alexander tells you that you are now entering the Animal Adventures theme park. And he tells you that it is only for animals. But because you are so very special, you are the only human to have ever been invited to come and have some fun with them. Oh, and you thank him very much. You are so excited. You give a little squeal of delight. Penelope tells you that you are allowed to stay overnight with them. She tells you that Alexander and Hare will be staying in a little wooden cabin with you out by the lake. But she'll take you there later. First, it's time to have some fun. As you walk along, you see stalls and rides everywhere. You can hear the sounds of laughter all over the place. You can smell candy floss. Oh, it smells wonderful. You can see balloons floating on strings at a stall nearby. And all of the balloons have the faces of animals on them. You see a big gorilla getting one for his daughter who looks ever so pleased with it and skips off happily with a floating balloon. Alexander and Penelope tell you all about all of the different things you can do here all of the different rides you can go on. You can't wait to try all of them, every last one of them. They tell you that the animal adventure isn't just a theme park, it's also a water park too. And it also has a jungle section for you to explore as well. The jungle section 
as elephants squirting water from their trunks to knock off other animals who try to walk across the lake. That's great fun, that is. Everyone ends up in the water. There is a racetrack here too. A racetrack that the fastest animals run on. Cheetahs having races with other cheetahs because everyone knows that they are the fastest animals and no one can beat them. There are free air balloon rides around this amazing resort too. You can see it all up from the air above you. There is everything here. Everything that you can possibly imagine to have fun doing, it's all here. So for a few moments, go and have some fun with Alexander and Penelope. Maybe you will meet some more new friends. Try out all of the rides for yourself. Go on, go and have some fun. Wow, now that was fun, wasn't it? But now Penelope tells you it's time for you to go to the little cabin on the lake. You can always come back to the Animal Adventure Park tomorrow and have some more fun. You have seen some amazing things today and you are really enjoying being here. And you realise just how important and how special animals truly are. They see the world so simply and not complicated at all. You see the little cabin in front of you now and it looks ever so cosy and inviting. The three of you go through the door into a beautiful bedroom. It's just one big room with three wonderfully big soft beds and they have lovely soft quilts on them and big squishy pillows for you to lay your head on. And you realise now that actually you are feeling a bit sleepy. So you climb up onto your bed and Penelope and Alexander climb onto theirs. You thank them for inviting you here and for giving you such a wonderful day with them. You snuggle down deeper in your lovely soft bed. And you can still hear faintly in the distance the sounds of the theme park still going on. 
and you smile to yourself with happiness. It really is wonderful here. And as a bonus, you now have two new best friends. Your eyes begin to feel heavy and your eyelids are beginning to droop. But your body feels so peaceful, so relaxed, so calm, and so very, very heavy. You love being here with your new friends. It's truly wonderful. And you hear Penelope and Alexander say goodnight to you. And you say goodnight back. And just as your eyes are closing, you realise just how special these animals are. You realise just how special and how important all animals are. You've seen how they live and how they all have fun together. They all live so peacefully. You've also seen how they all help each other, how kind they are to each other. And you think that kindness is a very wonderful thing. And you decide that you too will be kind always. So you close your eyes and give a great big sigh as you begin to drift into sleep. You feel your breathing as it begins to slow down and you feel your chest just rising gently and falling. You listen to the gentle rhythm of your heartbeat as it gently lulls you into a beautiful, restful sleep. Just listen to your breathing as you go deeper and deeper into sleep, feeling so peaceful, so calm, so relaxed. And when you wake up in the morning, you will feel so refreshed, so very, very happy. And remember, you can come back to visit Penelope and Alexander whenever you wish. Now imagine that you are in a beautiful garden and this garden has a very old brick wall running all the way around it. There is ivy and flowers growing on some parts of the wall and it really does look beautiful. You can feel the warmth of the sun as it touches your skin. And you look up at the beautiful baby blue colour of the sky. You can even feel a gentle cool breeze on your face. As you look up, you see a few fluffy white clouds slowly floating past. Just drifting along with nowhere special to be. Just like you at this moment in time. Just drifting along with nowhere special to be. But here, right now, in this very moment. Now as you look around your beautiful garden, you notice a doorway in the old wall and you wonder where it goes. So you decide to go and have a look and find out. You walk up to the door and reach for the handle. And as you do, you become very excited, wondering what on earth could be on the other side. You open the door, you step through, and you find yourself in a beautiful botanic garden. It's amazing. You see many different types of flowers, most of which you've never seen before. And some of them are just swaying gently in the cool, calm breeze. All of them lifting their heads up towards the sunlight and feeling the warmth on their little faces. The birds are chirping and chatting to each other. It's so peaceful and comfortable here and you can smell the beautiful fragrance of the flowers and it's intoxicating. Then you realise you can hear running water. So you stand up 
to see where it's coming from. You walk along the gravel pathway towards the sound and as you draw closer to it, you see before you a wonderful shallow stream with a pretty wooden bridge over it. The water is so clear and inviting as you look at it and you can see tiny colourful fish as they swim on by. They look like they're having fun too. Some of them are even jumping out of the water then landing back in it with a great big splash. How funny! This truly is an amazing place. Suddenly you hear a rustling under the pretty bridge and a little head pops up from beneath it. It's a spider but not an ordinary spider. The spider smiles at you and says hello. And you're a bit shocked at this because you didn't know that spiders could talk. Well, this one can. How amazing is that? She tells you that her name is Leggy. And you think that's a bit of an odd name for a spider, but well, she does have very long legs and rather a lot of them too. So it kind of fits her really. Leggy tells you that her real name is Peggy, but she doesn't like it much. She prefers Leggy because she has such beautiful long legs. She likes her legs. She likes them so much, she's even painted some toenails on the bottom of them in a bright pink colour. Wow. Leggy brings the whole of her body onto the bridge and you can see now that she's about the size of a cat. A cat with very long legs and lots of them. Now that you can see her properly, you can also see that she's wearing a pink frilly dress and has lots of dangly sparkly jewellery on. She even has very big dangly earrings on too. At first you were a bit startled because she's so big, but you're okay now because you now can see how cuddly she is. She also has a bright pink hat balanced on the top of her head and you think she looks really, really cute. You see that she is also carrying a big pink bag and she tells you that she has her embroidery in it. She just loves to do embroidery and she's very good at it. Leggy tells you that she has lots of children. She also tells you that she has lots and lots of grandchildren too and they are called little Leggies. You think that could be quite confusing if they all have the same name, but Leggy doesn't think so. Leggy tells you that she has her own pretty house with a white picket fence with lots of flowers that she likes to grow herself. She loves to garden. She thinks she's a great gardener. You think that Leggy is the most amazing little creature you have ever met. And you are so glad to be here. She asks you if you would like to visit her home. <laughs> well, of course you do. So you go with Leggy to her home to meet her family and see her beautiful garden. Leggy tells you that where you are now is actually the botanical gardens and she has lived here all of her life. She says there is no place anywhere it's nicer to live than here. You both reach her home and go inside. And you see a few other spiders in there and they all turn and smile at you and say hello. Big ones, small ones, skinny ones, plump ones, different coloured ones, black ones, brown ones, red ones, yellow ones. You didn't know spiders came in that many colours, but they do. Leggy tells you that they are a few of her children and you wonder just how many children she actually does have. You realise that Leggy is very wise and very kind and you really like her. She invites you to come and have a picnic in the botanical gardens with her and her little family. Well, very big family actually. Her children immediately start gathering up all that they will need for a picnic and Leggy invites you to help too. So you find yourself making sandwiches and bringing the orange juice. 
Leggy just loves orange juice and she tells you it's very good for you too. You all carry all of the food and the drink and take it to the picnic spot. The picnic spot, well, it's next to the very pretty bridge by the stream. How lovely. You all sit down to have your picnic and maybe watch the world go by and get to know each other better. So just sit with Leggy and her family and have a little natter. Leggy and her family decide to make a huge web. A web so big that they use it as a trampoline. And they all have fun jumping up and down. And they ask you if you would like to have a try. Well, obviously you do. You can't wait, in fact. Leggy says that after you've all had some fun on the big, beautiful trampoline web, they will take you and show you around her beautiful garden and you can see what other exciting things they have to play on. Ooh, that sounds good. She says that they have a massive slide that comes out of a tree. They have swings made from webs that not only do they swing backwards and forwards, they also bounce up and down at the same time. They also have hammocks made from webs and they are so much more comfortable than human beds. Go and have some fun with Leggy and her wonderful family. Go and find what else they have in the garden. What other exciting things do they have? Go and see. Now wasn't that fun? Leggy says that you can have a sleepover if you want to. And you really do. Because you really, really like Leggy and her family. They have been so kind to you. 
Leggy points to a rather lovely hammock in the tree. Some of her children are already on their hammocks. So she points and says, this is where you can sleep. You look at the hammock and you climb up onto it. You lay down and put your head on a soft, squidgy pillow and sigh with happiness. The pillow makes you feel so comfy and it smells so nice and fresh. There is also a big, soft, warm, snuggly blanket too. So you pull it over you and get yourself nice and comfy and relax. The hammock gently begins to sway from side to side. It's like it's trying to rock you to sleep all by itself. And your eyes are feeling a little bit heavy now. And your body is feeling a little bit tired. You have had the most wonderful An amazing day with Leggy and her family, her beautiful, kind family. You take a deep breath in through your nose and gently blow it out from your mouth. You take another deep breath and gently blow it out from your mouth. And you feel very sleepy now. So tired, so relaxed, so peaceful, so calm. You feel a gentle wave of sleepiness starting at your feet. And you can feel your toes going to sleep. It feels all warm and tingly, ever so soft. You feel this soothing, gentle wave of sleepiness coming up your calves and your shins over your knees and you can feel it going up your thighs you think your legs have already gone to sleep you feel very tired now so sleepy but so very very happy you're just having a little rest after all that playing and it feels good the beautiful wave of sleepiness travels all the way up your body and down your arms and into your hands making your body feel very very heavy very very tired very very sleepy this gentle warm wave of sleepiness travels up your face and over the top of your head and down the back of your neck You feel so tired now, so sleepy. But you know you are safe. You know you are warm. You know you are loved. And you know you are very, very protected. You feel nice and warm and very snuggly under your soft blanket and very squidgy pillow. So for now, Just have a little sleep. You can play again tomorrow. You can see Leggy and her family any time you want. Because they're your friends now. And they love you. And they are so very, very kind to you. So night, night. Sleep tight, lovely angel. Now imagine yourself on a beautiful winding path deep in the heart of a wonderful enchanted forest. The ground beneath your feet is solid but soft and it's made from the fallen leaves from the trees. Can you feel it under your feet? Does it feel crunchy and noisy? Or does it feel soft and quiet as you walk on it? You can feel a gentle breeze on your face as you walk along the path and you can feel the warmth of the sun all over your body. It's ever so peaceful here. You look up to the very tops of the trees and you see glints of sunlight shimmering upon the leaves, making them look like tiny silver stars. You hear a 
rustling sound in the distance. You look around. What is it, you wonder? You look again. And out of the corner of your eye, you see movement. You focus on it and realise that those rustling sounds you hear are the sounds of a big ginger cat. And it's a big cat. Now this big ginger cat is standing upright. You know, kind of like Puss in Boots does. He has on big leather boots. What can only be described really as biker boots. They even have a shiny buckle on them too. He has on a leather cap with sunglasses perched on top of it. He has big leather gloves and a big leather belt around his waist. Suddenly, he looks up and he sees you and he smiles and he says hello. He asks you if you've seen a shiny brass key. He's dropped it and now he can't find it. He introduces himself and tells you that his name is Marvin. And he asks you if you would like to help him find the key. Well, of course. You say yes. And then you tell him your name. The two of you rummage around in the undergrowth for a bit when you see something shining in the grass. Is this it? You ask as you hold out the key to him. Fantastic, he says. That's the one. Because you've helped him, he asks you if you would like to join him and his friends for the day. They are going on a bike ride together. Of course, you say you would love to. So you follow Marvin, the big ginger cat, as he leads you out of the forest and into a lovely big field. And at the edge of this field, there is a small village. And Marvin tells you that this is where he and his friends live. Now this village is not an ordinary village. All of the buildings are high up in the trees and they don't have roads, well, as such. They have rope pathways, big enough to walk on and surely big enough to ride on too. There are rope ladders hanging down from some of the trees and you both climb up together. And as you climb, you notice how different all the buildings are. You see houses, you see shops, you see a school and even a library. It's fascinating up here. You see lots of other cats going about their daily business, chatting to their friends, having fun. Marvin brings you to a little tea shop where he is meeting his friends and they're all sitting there outside at the table waiting for him. Marvin introduces you and tells him about you and how you helped him find his key because without his key he couldn't want a bike ride with his friends. There are three other cats who are all dressed in leather outfits too. Susie is dressed in a red leather and she's a big white fluffy Persian cat. Steve is a tortoise shell cat and he's dressed in a very striking blue leather outfit. And then there is Bob who is a black and white moggy, dressed in a silver leather outfit. And all of these cats all stand on two legs, just like you. Marvin then says, let's go. So you all walk around to the back of the building. You are so excited. You think you're going to ride on a motorbike. How great is that? You think to yourself, cats that can talk, cats that can ride bikes. Wow. What a wonderful place this is. You get back to the back of the building and stop. And you see there are five bicycles, all with safety locks on them. And there is even one for you too. Marvin takes out his key and unlocks his bike. And you just smile to yourself thinking, oh well, never mind. I can always ride a motorbike when I'm older. The five of you climb on your bikes and you set off and you ride on the rope paths it's a bit wobbly but it's fun Steve says let's go to the bike park for the day so Marvin leads the way after a short while you come to the bike park 
Now this park is built just like a skateboard park. It has the same jumps and the same up and down ramps. So for a while, ride your bike on the ramps with Marvin, Susie, Steve and Bob. Enjoy having fun with them and see how fast you can ride your bike. It's going to be amazing. Oh, well that was fun, wasn't it? You all decide you need a drink now, because you're very thirsty after all that riding. And maybe you can have a big cream cake too. At the end of the bike park is a little cafe. So you all sit down and get your drinks and cakes. And then you all chat away very happily. You talk about the daredevil stunts you've just done. And you love being here with your new friends. You really enjoyed riding with the cats. And it's been the most exciting day ever. After a long while, you realise that it's time for you to go home now. And Marvin says he will guide you back to the forest where you met him. So you say goodbye for now to Steve, Susie and Bob and tell them you will come back again soon. You are now back in the forest with Marvin and he tells you that he and his friends have had the most wonderful day with you and he really, really hopes you will come back again soon. He says next time you can all go skateboarding again or maybe swimming because they have an incredible swimming pool and you thought cats didn't like water. Well, these cats do. He tells you it has a great big wave maker. And he says it's like swimming in the sea, but better. You say, well, I look forward to that, Marvin. But for now, you say goodbye to Marvin and begin your walk back home. You feel so peaceful, so calm and so relaxed. And yet at the same time, so happy and joyful. You are so happy to have met Marvin, the biker cat, and his friends, and you can't wait to come back again. So 
suddenly you realise that you are now back in your own bed. How did that happen? Well, you're feeling very sleepy now anyway. After all, you've had a very busy day. So snuggle down, close your eyes. You can always come back again to see Marvin and his friends. But for now, take a gentle breath in and slowly breathe out. You're drifting deeper and deeper into the most wonderful night's sleep. And you feel so safe, so protected, and you know you are so very, very loved. And when you wake up in the morning, you will feel completely refreshed, bright and alert, ready to begin your new day ahead. So good night, sleepy one. Sleep well. Now imagine that you are outdoors walking in a lovely green forest. And the night time is approaching fast. But at the moment it's still light out. But the sun is beginning to set and the sky is starting to darken ever so slightly. The air around you is still and calm and you can hear all the different sounds as the creatures of the forest begin to settle for the night. Can you hear them? The birds are flying home to roost now and the tiny animals are rushing to their homes. You can see the foxes calling out to each other as they come out for the night to begin their hunt or for food or just to play with each other and have fun. You can hear the sounds of breaking twigs and the rustle of leaves as each tiny animal scurries to their warm, safe home. As you walk along, you hear a different sound coming from the treetops high above you. You're not sure what it is yet, so you listen harder. And you realise that what you are hearing is the call of a night owl. And by the sound of it, a very large owl indeed. You walk a bit deeper into the lush forest as the sky gets darker still. And it feels so peaceful here, so calming. And the night gets quieter. There are now no sounds of any animals as they are all tucked up warm in their cosy homes. The birds are all asleep in their nests. But again, you hear the call of the night owl. You hear the flapping of its large but gentle wings. The sound gets closer to you. When suddenly, right before you, plops down a very large owl with very big round glasses perched on the end of his nose. Startled, you take a step back, wondering what to do when the large old owl nods his head at you and says, Good evening. Then he pushes his glasses back up on his nose because they keep sliding down. Your mouth drops open and you think to yourself, Did this owl just speak to me? Well, yes he did actually. Because you didn't answer, the old owl clears his throat again with a big and says again, Good evening. You stutter good evening back to him and smile. The owl smiles back and he tells you he is off for a fly around. He says he spotted you from high above when he thought to himself, I wonder if that little human would like to come and fly with me. So he flew down to ask you. He says he often asks little humans if they would like to fly with him. He says that sometimes he gets rather lonely flying on his own. 
and you are so excited by this that you say, oh yes, please. Well, who wouldn't want to fly high up in the sky with an owl? I know I would. As you look around you, you notice that the sun has gone down and been replaced by a beautiful silver moon. And it's actually quite dark now, but you can see all around you with the shining glow of the moonlight. The old owl, who is very large indeed, bigger than you in fact, tells you to grab hold of his feathers and pull yourself up onto his back. But he tells you not to pull any of them. Don't pull them out, as it can hurt a lot. You grab the old owl's feathers and heave yourself up onto his back, being very careful not to pull out any of those feathers. He then tells you to hold on tight and he begins to run, flapping his huge wings. The old owl runs and runs and runs, but nothing seems to be happening. But the old owl still keeps running. He's now starting to get a bit puffed and his huge wings keep flapping away like mad. You look ahead of you and you see that you are heading towards the edge of a cliff. Oh no. And you're starting to get a bit worried now as that cliff edge is getting very close indeed. And the old owl hasn't even taken off yet. But the old owl still keeps running. He still keeps puffing away. Then, just as you get to the edge of the cliff, the old owl jumps off it. Then the two of you swoop downwards going faster and faster and the old owl's wings are spread really wide and are flapping away like crazy. You close your eyes really tightly and cling on to the owl's feathers. Then, just as you think you're going to crash, the old owl lifts himself higher and higher up into the night sky, flapping his wings as hard as he can. The owl tells you, That was a close one. I thought we were going to crash into that old oak tree over there, but we didn't. You slowly open your eyes and take a look around, and what you see takes your breath away. You are high up in the sky, gliding on the back of an owl. The moon is shining brightly and the stars are twinkling like beautiful diamonds in the sky. And it's so still and quiet up here. All you can hear is the gentle breeze as it washes over you. The old owl is no longer flapping his wings. He is just gliding on the currents of air all around you. He turns his body to the left and you look below you. Far beneath you is a beautiful lake surrounded by your lovely forest. And you can see the reflection of the moon on the water's surface. You can even see your own reflection on the back of the owl as he gets closer to the water. So for a few more moments, fly with this beautiful old owl. Feel the gentle breeze on your face. Talk to him. Ask him his name. You can ask him whatever you want. Don't forget to tell him who you are as well and where you live. So just fly.
the beautiful old owl returns you to the floor of your forest and gently lands. Well, I say gently, but you sort of land with a crash and then a slide along the ground until you fall off his back laughing. You thank this beautiful creature for letting you fly with him. You ask him if it would be possible for you to do this again, and he says, Of course it is, little human. All you have to do is go for an evening walk in your forest, look up, and I'll be there. The old owl flaps his huge wings, runs for a bit, and then a little bit more, and then he takes off. And you watch him as he disappears up into the night sky. And you hear him make the sound that only owls can make as he slowly gets smaller and smaller. And then he's gone. But you feel so happy and so content now, so peaceful. So now it's time to leave this beautiful place, leave the beautiful wise owl safe in the knowledge that you can come and visit him any time you like. And you're now back in your own bed and my guiding voice will be leaving you shortly. Ponder the words of the night owl as you gently rest. Take a deep breath and slowly breathe out. Feel yourself becoming more and more relaxed. One more deep breath and gently breathe out. More and more sleepy, so peaceful. Now imagine that you are in a very beautiful, lush green forest and the sun is shining and it's a very beautiful day. The sun is peeking through the leaves and the branches of the tall trees, so many of them. And you feel very calm, very relaxed and very, very peaceful. You can hear birds singing to each other. Can you hear them? You can hear the birds and see them flying from tree to tree to have a little chat with each other. And they sound so happy as they tweet away high up in the branches of the trees. Can you hear the birds singing? Can you hear them chatting to each other? As you walk along, you notice something ahead of you, sitting against a very tall and bushy tree. And you're not sure what it is, so you walk a bit quicker and go and have a look. As you get closer to the tree, you realise that it's a fox, a rather beautiful fox with a very bushy red tail pointing straight up. And this fox is sitting cross-legged at the base of the tree with his eyes closed and he looks like he's, well, he looks like he's meditating really. And you can hear the beautiful sound of a Tibetan singing bowl but you can't see it anywhere. You can even smell incense burning, a lovely sweet aroma, and it kind of tickles your nostrils. You don't want to disturb the fox, so you stop and stand still, and you just watch. And as you watch, you notice that he has on very brightly coloured trousers, lots of reds and blues, and even purples, and you think they are rather ugly and far too bright. 
He is also wearing a very shiny silver waistcoat with really, really bright yellow buttons. He looks like he's got tiny suns stuck all over him. And he has on the biggest orange hat that you have ever seen with a really big pink feather sticking out from the top of it. He really is a very colourful sight to see. It's like he had no idea what to put on when he got dressed this morning, so he put them all on. He also has very large round metal framed glasses on. Normally, foxes are very shy and try to hide themselves away, but this one clearly isn't. As you stand there, trying to be ever so quiet, he opens his eyes and he peers over the top of his glasses. He gives you a great big smile and says hello. He asks how he can help you today. So you tell him you were just out walking and came across him, but you didn't want to disturb him, so you tried to be ever so quiet. He smiles again and tells you to come and sit beside him, so you do. He tells you his name is Mr. Chi, and he asks what your name is, so you tell him. Around Mr. Chi's neck, he is wearing mala beads. They are beads that help you when you meditate. They are very beautiful. Mr. Chi pulls another set of mala beads out of his pocket and gives them to you as a gift. He tells you to put them on. You thank him for his lovely gift and put them on. He asks you if you would like to meditate with him. And you say, oh yes, I'd like to do that. All he wants you to do is close your eyes and just breathe gently in and out. In and out. In and out. So you do as he asks. With your eyes closed, you can hear the sound of the Tibetan singing bowl even more clearly now, but still you can't see it. You can smell the incense even stronger. Can you smell it? Can you smell how strong it is? You realize that you can hear Mr. Chi speaking, but he's not using his voice to speak. You can hear his thoughts in your mind. How clever Mr. Chi is. With his voice in your mind, he asks you again, how can he help you? So you sit and you think for a moment. And then you tell him. You tell him whatever is on your mind. Whatever may be worrying you. So for a few moments, just sit with Mr. Chi. And tell him what is on your mind. And he will give you the answer that you need to hear. Because Mr. Chi has the answers to everything. Mr. Chi can solve any problem because Mr. Chi is a very clever fox.
Mr. Chi now asks you to open your eyes and just breathe gently and slowly. And after a minute or so, he asks you to come with him into his den for a nice cool drink and a biscuit so that you can have a chat. So you both get up and walk around to the back of the tree where there is a door which Mr. Chi opens and you both enter the lovely room beyond. The room is very comfortable and very, very colourful, just like Mr. Chi. There are beads hanging everywhere. There are beads on the walls. There are beads hanging over his cosy little lamps. There are even beads hanging from the ceiling, all in many, many different colours. There is a nice warm fire glowing and there are flowers everywhere. Mr. Chi likes flowers. He tells you his favourite flowers are tulips. And he asks you what your favourite flower is and you tell him. Mr. Chi tells you to sit in his best chair. A nice big comfy armchair with lots of colourful cushions on it. Colour everywhere in Mr. Chi's home. So you sit down on his best chair and take the cool drink Mr. Chi offers you. Beside the comfy chair is a little table and Mr. Chi puts down on it a plate of delicious biscuits. Your favourite biscuits. So, for a few moments, just sit with Mr. Chi, the clever fox, and have a chat about anything you want. Maybe you can ask Mr. Chi just how he became the cleverest fox in the kingdom. You can ask him why everyone comes to him with their problems. Maybe... You can even ask him where on earth did he get those ghastly clothes from. This is now your time with the clever fox. So make the most of it as he is one busy fox. Whatever you feel like talking about, Mr. Chi will listen. Because today, you are his favourite person.
now it's time for you to say goodbye to Mr. Chi and thank him for letting you meditate and chat with him and for seeing those woof, really amazing clothes. It's time for you to thank him for giving you a lovely cool drink and some of your favourite biscuits. It's time for you to leave his lovely cosy den and to return to your lovely home. Now imagine that you are in a beautiful, lush, green jungle. And this jungle has the most amazing trees. Some of them are very tall. So tall that they look as if they are almost touching the sky. Some of them are a bit smaller and a bit fatter. And some of them have very strange vines dangling from them. And you're not sure really what they are. They look all funny. You are deep in the jungle and you realize that you can hear lots of strange noises and you're not really sure where they are coming from but they don't scare you at all because you actually recognize some of them. You can hear the sound of birds as they fly from treetop to treetop. And there are several different birds calling out to each other. And you can hear them. You can also hear the breeze fluttering through the leaves on the trees. Stop for just a second and close your eyes. And you enjoy the variety of all the different sounds all around you. You can hear the sound of a big jungle cat far off in the distance and you can hear him calling out to his family maybe he's calling them home for their supper maybe he just wants to know where they are you can even hear the sound of monkeys chattering to each other can you hear them some of them are quite loud indeed and you wonder what they are saying to each other. If you listen really hard, you might be able to understand what they are saying. So take a moment and listen to them. Continue to walk through this lovely, lush green jungle. But you've never noticed before just how many shades of green there are. It's beautiful. The light in the forest cascades down through the leaves like twinkling lights. And there are ferns and moss everywhere. You can hear the many tiny animals of the jungle all scurrying out of your way, running fast hoping that you can't see them. And you can't see them. They are too quick for you, but you can hear them. You notice that the sun is starting to dip and there is a lovely orange-red glow 
in the sky. And you can see it as you look up, but you can also see the colours peeking through the tops of the trees. As you continue your walk, you come across an old fallen tree just lying on the ground. So you decide to have a little sit and rest your legs. As you sit there, you hear movement behind you and you turn to have a look. Your mouth drops open in a gasp and you are amazed because standing in front of you is a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee with a bright red bow tie around his neck and a bright red hat sitting on top of his head. The chimpanzee tips his hat to you and says, Good afternoon. You give a gulp and your eyes stand out on stalks. Did this chimpanzee really just say good afternoon to you? Well, actually, yes, he did. Before you can reply, he sits himself down next to you and makes himself rather comfortable. He takes off his hat and lays it gently on the fallen tree and gives you a very big grin. He tells you that he is gathering his friends for afternoon tea. And he asks if you would like to come too. Well, you give a bit of a splutter and say, well, um, why yes, that would be lovely, thank you. The chimpanzee puts his red hat back on and stands up and says, Okay then, follow me. So the two of you set off together and you go off and you gather the rest of the chimpanzee's friends. After a little while, you come across a great big tiger with a very large head. He too is wearing a rather swish bow tie, but his is blue. He also has on a big blue cowboy hat. He grins at you and says, Hello. You notice that he has very large teeth, but he's not scary at all. In fact, he's a big old softy, really. So the three of you keep on moving. You keep moving along, just looking around, when you come to a clearing in the jungle. Now, in the middle of this clearing, there is a table and five chairs. And sitting at the table is a very large elephant with a white bow tie around his neck and a rather large floppy white hat on his head. Sitting next to him is a snake who also has on a bow tie. Only his bow tie is pink. Pink to match his tiny pink hat. The chimpanzee and the tiger walk over and sit down. And they beckon you to sit down on the remaining chair. You splutter a bit more and go, oh, okay. You cannot believe that you are sitting in the middle of the jungle with a chimpanzee, a tiger, an elephant, and a snake. And they are all wearing bow ties and hats. Goodness me. You look down at the table and see a big flowery teapot with five china cups and saucers. There is a sugar bowl and a fresh jug of milk. Also on the table there are scones with strawberry jam and fresh whipped cream. There is a huge plate of cookies of various sizes and shapes. 
there is a very large chocolate cake sitting in the centre of the table with flakes of chocolate sticking out all over it. There are even plates of cucumber sandwiches for everyone. There is a massive jug filled with lemonade for those who'd rather not have any tea. There is a bowl filled to the very brim with fresh fruit. Apples, bananas, pears, oranges, peaches and many, many more different fruits. This is a relative feast for the eyes. Everything looks so delicious and then you realise that you are very hungry indeed. It is then that the chimpanzee remembers that no one has told you their names. So he introduces himself and his friends. He tells you that his name is Chico. Chico the chimpanzee. His friends are Tommy the tiger, Eddie the elephant, and Sid the snake. He asks you what your name is, so you tell him. You ask them why they are all wearing bow ties and hats. And Sid the snake tells you it's because they always get dressed up for afternoon tea. It wouldn't be proper if they didn't. So for a little while, just sit with your new friends and enjoy your feast. Ask them all the questions that are bouncing around in your head. Ask them where they all live, who they live with, and anything else you want to ask. They are so thrilled that you are having afternoon tea with them. They say they don't have important guests very often, but you are important especially to them. So now is your chance to ask all of the things you wanted to know about the lives of chimpanzees, tigers, elephants and snakes.
it's time for the tea party to end. And everyone has to go home now to their own homes. And you have to go home too. So you stand up and thank these beautiful animals for inviting you to their tea party. You thank them for all of the lovely food. But most of all, you thank them for telling you all about their life in this huge, lush green jungle. Chico, the chimpanzee, hands you a little box with a silver ribbon tied around it and tells you that it is a gift for you and you thank him very much. He tells you that if you ever want to come to their tea party again, all you have to do is come to the lush green jungle and he will find you. So you smile and you wave goodbye to your new friends and start to walk away. Now imagine that you are in a beautiful lush green rainforest and this forest has the most amazing trees and some of them are very tall indeed so tall in fact that they look as if they are touching the sky there are many many luscious green trees here and you can hear all kinds of sounds coming from the forest. You can hear lots of different birds. You can hear the sounds of the animals moving around in the undergrowth. You can even hear the sound of water running over rocks. You can't see it you can hear it. It really is very relaxing. You find yourself walking along a path that winds in and out of the forest floor. And you are just chilling in this beautiful rainforest, minding your own business when suddenly you hear the sounds of snoring, loud, thunderous snoring. My goodness me. You follow the sound until it leads you to a tree that looks very interesting. You stop in front of it and take a good look. The sound of the snoring is so loud now that you cover your ears wondering who on earth is making that sound. They must be very deeply asleep. You see that this particular tree looks kind of like the secret tree house. But it isn't the secret tree house. Carved into the tree is a sign. And this sign is saying Barry and Norma's residence. And you wonder who on earth are Barry and Norma? Hmm. The snoring suddenly stops and you hear movement coming from above you. So you peer upwards trying to see what is moving around up there. You let your eyes adjust and then to your surprise you see a sloth. Yep, that's right, a sloth. Its tail is wound around the branches and it's hanging upside down, looking at you with very big, sleepy eyes. Sloths 
move extremely slowly and they love being high up in the treetops. To your surprise, the sloth speaks to you and says, Hello. It's a girl sloth. And she tells you her name is Maisie. And Maisie has on a bright yellow hat with a big green feather in it. And it makes her look as if sunshine is coming out from the top of her head. You say hello back to Maisie and you tell her your name. She asks you if you would like to come up and meet her family and see where she lives. Well, of course you do. Maisie drops down a rope ladder for you and you climb up. You would love to live high up in the treetops. When you reach the first level, there is a spiral staircase and it's wrapped around the whole tree. So you can walk on that now. When you get to the top of the staircase, you stand next to Maisie. She is the right way up now. She adjusts her big yellow hat and says, Follow me. Maisie takes you to her front door and you see that her house is a wooden circular lodge and it's very smart. Very high tech with all of the mod cons that you would like in your house. You go inside and you see that her home is kitted out purely for snooze and relaxation. There are big, soft, fluffy cushions everywhere. They even have a high-tech speaker system blasting out sweet, relaxing music. You really do like Maisie's home. Maisie introduces you to her family. There is her dad, Barry, and you notice that he has an earring in his left ear and a baseball cap on back to front. You find this very funny, but you don't say anything as you wouldn't want to upset him. There is her mum called Norma. And her mum Norma only has on one slipper because she doesn't know where she left the other one. There is Cyril, her brother, Maisie's older brother. And he is a rather grumpy teenager who just keeps picking his nose while he's on his iPad. Ew. He just grunts hello to you. Well, at least that's what you think, he said. And lastly, there is Baby Lightning, Maisie's little brother. And he is wearing a t-shirt with his lightning bolt stretched right across the front of it. But he keeps puking every two minutes. And you think it's because he's had too much chocolate. Maisie seems to be the only normal one in this rather colourful family. This family has all the best music and they love playing it very loudly indeed. And one of the tracks on the CD keeps skipping but it takes them so long to go over and fix it that it fixes itself. You walk over to the window and take a look outside and you can see the beautiful panoramic views above the treetops and you notice that this lovely slow family of sloths 
have a speaker system scattered all around the forest. Much to the annoyance of all the other creatures who share this wonderful rainforest with them. You turn back and look around the room and it's like everything is in slow motion. They even speak in slow motion too. Phew. Norma, Maisie's mum, gives you a nice cup of tea and you all sit down and have a little chat. You tell them all about your family and where you live. You tell them what your favourite things are and who your best friend is. So for a few moments, sit and chat with this amazing family of sloths and find out about them too. Oh, and don't forget to drink your cup of tea. When you have finished your chat, Barry, Maisie's dad, says, Okay now, it's time for bed. He asks you if you would like to stay and have a little nap too. And of course, you say yes. Barry, Maisie's dad, says they've been up two hours already, two hours and they are exhausted now it's nice to chat with new friends but sloths like to get at least 18 hours of sleep because their whole world is so very slow you realize that outside of this amazing home there is light rain falling and it's making you feel very sleepy listening to it. 
So you go outside and you choose a very comfy chair on the wraparound veranda. It's a deck chair and it's very comfy indeed. And it has a big soft pillow for your head. You take a seat and you can hear the soft and gentle music playing through this amazing speaker system. And it's making you feel very drowsy. It makes you feel so sleepy. So sleepy that you're finding it hard to open your eyes. But that's okay. Because you don't have to open your eyes if you don't want to. You don't need to. Just sit there in that chair with a big soft pillow, listening to the rain as it helps you to fall gently to sleep. You can still hear the soft and wonderful sounds of the beautiful music. And you are drifting deeper and deeper into the most wonderful night's sleep ever. So snuggle down and you feel so safe, so protected, so very loved. And when you wake up in the morning, you will feel completely refreshed, bright, and alert and ready to begin the amazing new day ahead and each night from now on you will sleep better and better deeper and deeper night night <laughs>